Hey, Raleigh. Hey, yes, what's up, Nicole? I got a bone to pick. Well, pick that bone. You have been saying that man is causing climate change, that it's our fault, but you've been missing the freaking elephant in the sky, my dude. The sun. The sun's natural cycles are always changing, and that's what causes climate change. Where did you hear that? I heard it on television, and when you think about it, the sun is really big, and people are medium-sized, and CO2 is really small. And which of those do you think is the most powerful? I mean, between medium-sized people and really small molecules, uh, yes, the sun is huge. But I think I have a couple of contextualizing details that are going to help us realize that it's not the sun's natural cycles. All right. Well, are the details big or small? (sighs) Whatever is going to get us out of this intro. Big, (laughs) small. (laughs) All right, Nicole. One of my absolute favorite climate denier playbook moves Mm -hmm. is to say it's just the sun's natural cycles so the sun is causing climate change they're they're ready to declare climate change real so they've gone from being like it's a hoax to like okay it's it is real and we've always said it's real (laughs) we never once said it was a hoax don't check the tape don't check any tape what are you doing checking the tape right now we know it's real in fact it's just the sun's natural heating and cooling and the way the earth's orbit tracks around the sun these are massive changes in comparison to the little itty bitty changes humans are making so that's what is causing climate change this is a very powerful form of climate misinformation and denial for me because i know so little about the universe and the solar system and sort of uh, hard sciences generally that I don't I don't have a good frame of reference for being like I didn't know that the sun had natural cycles. Maybe that's part of the misinformation. It I totally guess you'll is. tell me. Okay, it totally great. is. I mean, you, you're you're exactly right here. Where yes. a lot of people didn't even consider that the sun might change its amount of solar radiation that it is emitting or the irradiance mm-hmm. of the sun, and that is a really powerful tool for climate deniers to seize on because they're able to say like, oh, look, uh, nobody told you about this, but the sun actually changes its cycles. And these, what these climate scientists don't get is that their models don't incorporate the fact that the sun changes in power and radiation. So the sun is this gigantic ball of plasma. Seen it, heard of it. Heard of it, felt it, and it's constantly radiating solar energy. Mm-hmm. But it goes through cycles, and sometimes it's not as much solar energy, and sometimes it's way more solar energy. And climate scientists don't freaking get this, and they overlook this, and these are what's causing it to get really, really hot and heat up more and more for the past 30 years. Okay. So that's the theory. Got it. Now, my my initial reaction to this is climate scientists seem pretty smart, Mm -hmm. and I have to assume that they've seen the sun before so i think at some point they've probably taken the sun into consideration i would hope right and 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 just to push back a little bit because the theory here is not that they don't know about the sun okay. it's that they just haven't interrogated what the sun secretly does in its cycles what's the sun up to when it's night out right yeah where does it go so i'm gonna get two clips here that i'm just okay. gonna play for you this is uh tucker carlson from okay. fox and friends and he is incensed about these dang climate scientists. Among other things. Yeah. All right, here we go. The truth is the climate hasn't risen in the past. Temperatures have not risen in the past several years. They've gone down. And there is, in fact, an emergent scientific consensus um, that we may be in for a period of global cooling caused not by greenhouse gases, but by fluctuations in solar energy, sunspots. So So Tucker Carlson says there is an emerging scientific consensus Mm -hmm. that we're going to cool because of these sunspots. Okay. Okay. So sunspots are a real thing. Okay. So he's not making it up, but uh, he is saying it and it is wrong. So let's uh, (laughs) let's get one more. This is uh, Ron Johnson, a guy with a silly name. Wrong guy. Yeah. More like Ron Johnson. Johnson. Wow. It was right there. (laughs) All right. Here we go. Senator Ron Johnson. First of all, if you take a look at geologic time, we've had huge climate swings. We're sitting here in Wisconsin. Had it not been for climate swings, we'd be sitting on a two or 300 foot thick glacier. So the man wasn't around back then. So no, I, I absolutely do not believe that uh, you know, 
the science of man man caused climate change is uh, proven not not by any stretch of the imagination. I think it's far more likely that it's just sunspot activity or something just in in the geologic uh, eons of time where we have changes in the climate. Okay, so two people in a row have mentioned sunspots. Mm -hmm. Now, Nicole, have you ever heard of sunspots before? I've heard of them. In the way that I've heard of a band that I <laughs> pretend to know, you know, like yeah. I've heard about them being referenced somewhere, but I could not tell you a thing about them other than presumably they're on the sun. They, I mean, they're definitely on the sun. Uh, astrophysicists and astronomers have been seeing them for hundreds of years. These are like a very well documented little darker spots in the sun. As our technology improved, we've been able to discover what they are. They are mm -hmm. magnetic fields of the sun that are pulling the radiation back or pulling it offline so it's not taking a straight path to the Earth, and so it's causing like a little darkened oh, coloration. Oh, so it's not like... A, like a sticker on the sun that's preventing the light from getting to you. It's literally the the magnetic. There's big magnets in the sun. Yes. And the magnets are are controlled pulling. by the Jewish people. <laughs> exactly. No, and and the magnet the magnetic energy is like pulling. So the sun's shooting out energy, but then there's also a magnetic field that's warping the energy. So the what looks like a spot is you're just seeing the light move in a way that makes it look like there's something stuck on the sun uh honestly if i if i'm trying to answer you i'm gonna be wrong i don't really know how the physics of the sun create these sunspots in magnetic waves mm -hmm. outside of knowing that scientists have fucking figured it out okay they mm -hmm. also discovered that the sun has these 11 year magnetic cycles that cause the sun's radiation to get more or less intense by about point one percent okay so over a, every 11 years the magnetic pole of the sun slowly wanders and flips so it's oh, like wow. a, it's like a cycle um and so this is a real thing this is like a magnetic phenomenon the sun goes through and in the mid-20th century a serbian geophysicist and astronomer named milutin milenkovic discovered some cyclical changes in the way the earth actually orbits the sun so the ellipse of the orbit bulges or shrinks uh, there's it. also the tilt of the actual planet mm -hmm. and then the wobble of the earth along its orbit okay and these three different ways that the earth moves and, and changes its orbit change the solar irradiance that it receives from the sun it'll change how much ice the poles would have it changes the amount of energy that is absorbed on the earth so these are real cycles are these the like 11 year cycles or they vary? So these are actually much longer. These these okay. are not the 11 year. So this is this is the way the earth orbits the sun versus mm -hmm. how the sun actually is producing uh, magnetic radiation. So are we talking the scale of a human lifetime or are we talking like the geological scale? So these all all have different scales uh -huh. and they are not correlated with each other. You can imagine three separate variables constantly changing over the course of hundreds of years. So mm -hmm. each cycle it has a different time length, but they're all in the hundreds of years or thousands of years. There is a noticeable change in the way the Earth receives the sun's rays, but they are extremely well studied and understood. Got it. We know exactly where we are in the Milenkovitch cycles. We have this dialed in. Got it. I have never felt more like Homer Simpson just in my head, like, da 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 uh, da well, hey. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, this is astrophysics, yeah. you know, and I don't know a goddamn thing about astrophysics. <laughs> I took two classes on it in grad school. That's two more than me. And, but I was just like, fuck, I don't understand this at all. I don't know why, this, you know, like I, it, it, it's incredible to think of how they were able to model it. But I think I get it. So the, the, the bottom line is like there's three different variables. They affect the way that the earth is hit by the sun in different ways or they're affected by the sun in different ways and we know exactly where we're at in those cycles that's right yeah Great. so we got the we got the milenkovitch cycles which are longer term the way the sun and the earth interact and then we have the solar cycles of the sun that's an 11 year about 11 year cycle mm -hmm. and that changes how much energy the sun produces by 0.1 percent all of these cycles are deeply known to climate scientists mm -hmm. and they have incorporated all of these cycles into their climate models. Mm -hmm. So these are not like unknown things. These are the baseline first variables that they load into climate models when they're doing climate modeling. These are not mysterious forces. Mm -hmm. It would be like if somebody was trying to blow the lid off of professional bowling by being like, I discovered that they put oil on the bowling lanes. 
And it's like, yeah, that is part of the game. You know, okay. like you put oil on the lanes and the ball slides on the oil and they're like, oh, I know how you do the hook. They don't want you to know this, but there's oil there that helps the ball curve. I'm going to come clean right now and admit fully that I did not know that they put oil on bowling lanes. <laughs> well, they absolutely do. You know about the holes that they drill in the ball, right? Yes. Okay. That part I was well aware of. Got it. So maybe that's a better analogy, but they do oil the lanes. They okay. are There are five different oil patterns in the professional bowling circuit. They're all named after what? animals. You know what, Nicole, let's let's walk down this YouTube rabbit hole on a different day. But if you're listening out there and you're curious, it's fucking fascinating. <laughs> it doesn't God, sound like it. It's so fascinating. There's lots of different ways to hold the ball. Some people that don't I even knew. put their fingers in the hole. I know. Holes. I've seen them do that thing where they like whip it around whip so it, it does like a, a big bowling like. Ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it doesn't orbit. Oh, and we're uh, back to the Milankovitch cycle. Got him. See, okay. I was listening. And actually, we don't even have to fucking talk about the Milankovitch cycles again. Okay. Just know that scientists have this all figured out. Okay. This is a NASA article called NASA, Is the Sun Causing Global Warming? Since 1978, scientists have been tracking solar activity using sensors on satellites, which tell us there has been no upward trend in the amount of solar energy reaching our planet. So the idea that we are getting an overabundance of sun this is not a thing that's happening. Okay. It is. It, it would probably cause an Earth to warm up if mm -hmm. we were getting an overabundance of sun, but we are not getting per an overabundance Per the satellites. Of sun. Per the satellite data, per all of the authorities on the sun in the world, mm -hmm. the amount of sun we are getting is not increasing. Mm -hmm. So what then is causing the planet to warm up? Here we have another quote here. It's just from uh, Skeptical Science. Over the last 45 years of global warming, solar activity and global temperature has been steadily diverging. Instead of us seeing a correlation between the Earth's temperature and the amount of solar irradiance, we are actually seeing a divergence of that. So if instead of sun activity and temperature both going up, temperature is going up, but sun activity is going down. That's exactly right. Also, God, I'm smart. You're nailing this. And potentially the most damning piece of evidence is the way the Earth is warming. Mm -hmm. So we've got an atmosphere and we've got a planet, right? So the part that is warming is the lower atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And the upper atmosphere is actually cooling, okay? Implying that the heat is coming from the heat's coming from inside the house. The heat is coming from inside the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if, if we were seeing an uptick in solar irradiance, we would expect to see the upper atmosphere, the part actually receiving the sun's rays as it's coming in, mm -hmm. we would expect to see that part increasing in heat. And maybe as it gets down into the planet, though, also the lower atmosphere might be warming as well, but less, right? It. Like it's opposite what we would expect if we were getting more mm -hmm. energy from the sun and not less energy from the sun. And then um, another quote from NASA here. If there were no human influences on climate, scientists say Earth's current orbital positions within the Milankovitch cycles predict our planet should be cooling, not warming, continuing a long-term cooling trend that began 6,000 years ago. Right. So basically what we've got here is an understanding of the way the sun cycles are working mm -hmm. and a very clear divergence from them being connected to the heating of the planet. So we know how the sun cycles work. NASA is studying this, they've got it on lock, and they are seeing that actually all of the cycles that we're experiencing right now should see a cooling effect, but we are in fact seeing a warming effect on the planet. Therefore, we're not only responsible for the heating of the planet, but we can technically be responsible for more than 100% of the heating of the planet. Wow. Because it should be Extra cooling. Credit. Yeah. <laughs> we, it sh we should be seeing a, a global cooling effect and something is so impactful on the planet <laughs> that it is actually heating I wonder the what it up. could be. I wonder what it's, it could be. It is funny that it's like, well, we're, we're just humans. We're just little guys. We can't cancel out the big sun. And it's like, not only did we cancel out the actions of the big sun, it's we we overtook it completely. It's a real David and Goliath situation if David also sucked. Yeah. So let's jump into the timeline here. Uh, the year is 2003. Okay. We have Oklahoma Senator James Inhofe. He was the guy who took a snowball to Congress and said there can't be global warming because it's snowing outside. Yes. Okay. That's James Inhofe. Great. Uh, a skilled orator. And just a, a genius with visual aids. Yes. He had an aide go get snow and hold it for him so that he could toss it on the floor of Congress to show why global warming was fake. Where some janitor then had to mop it up so no one would slip. God, can you imagine being that janitor and just being yes, like, easily. this fucking guy. <laughs> 
Next up, I'm going to show that ink stains carpet. <laughs> So Senator James Inhofe, 2003, he gives his famous global warming is the greatest hoax ever perpetrated on the American people speech on the Senate floor. Boy, C-SPAN has not changed their graphics. But this is the most significant thing that it's just recently, it just came out, and that's a Harvard-Smithsonian 1,000-year uh, climate study. Smithsonian scientists Willie Soon and Sally Balunas and co-authors Craig Itso, Sherman Itso, and David LeGates compiled and examine results from more than 240 peer-reviewed papers published by thousands of researchers over the past four decades. In contrast to man's flawed limited research, the Harvard-Smithsonian study covered a multitude of geophysical and biological climate Not a strong reader. While man's analysis <laughs> relied mostly on tree ring data from northern hemisphere, these researchers offer a detailed look at climate changes that occurred in different regions around the world over the over the uh, last thousand years. So I know, like on an instinctual level, like I feel in my in my heart and in my gut not to trust this man. Mm -hmm. um, but it it sounds like he is citing somebody. He's citing somebody who published something. I use the term research loosely here, but it sounds like there is some research he's referencing. He didn't come up with these ideas. So where's this coming from? Sure. Yeah. So this is Senator James Inhofe from Oklahoma. He says at one point in this speech, global warming is the greatest hoax ever perpetrated on the American people. This dude does not seem that credible, but he is quoting some legit sounding scientists. So this is a really good question because the scientist he's quoting is Willie Soon. He's from the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, and it really does sound like he might be onto something. Now, if you step back and look at the field of astrophysics, the vast majority of astrophysicists, the well-respected scientists in astrophysics, are all on the same side as NASA here, where mm -hmm. they are all the, the the consensus of astrophysicists is that the sun cycles are pretty well documented. We know what they're able to do in terms of heating and cooling of the planet. Mm -hmm. And this excess heating we've been seeing for the past 20 years is not attributable to these sun cycles. Mm -hmm. And then we have Dr. Willie Soon, who's saying, ah, 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 actually, I think it is attributable to the sun cycles. And I will continue to write uh, decades worth of papers that have effectively the same conclusion that we don't really need to worry about man-made CO2 because all these changes we're seeing are from the sun's natural cycles. Yeah, well, when you find a guy who can do a job well, you want to stick with that guy right. for as long as possible. Give you know? him, he is a once in a generation genius. Yeah. And you got to give him the floor sometimes. I got, I got this cobbler. I've been going to this guy for 15 years now because it's like uh, he knows how to fix my shoes if this guy knows how to fix climate information then right. you got to keep going to the same guy yeah your cobbler 15 years he's only eaten one shoe <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a, a trustable guy 15 yeah. years one shoe and it wasn't my shoe and it wasn't even your shoe okay so we keep having dr willie soon publishing articles that are talking only about solar irradiance He's even got this like phrase, it's the sun, stupid. Like he's, I've heard that phrase. Yeah, that's kind of the big overarching drumbeat we're hearing from people who are climate skeptics. And who's to say who's right? Like Na this NASA FAQ, the obvious consensus of scientists, or Dr. Willie Soon, he's a, he's a scientist, he's an astrophysicist. That's like got to have something, some kind of cred on it, right? Now, I hope that what this is leading to is a little bit of a description of who this guy is. Well... Let me give you uh, an article from the New York Times, February 21st, 2015, and go ahead and read the title. Okay. And New, York, New York Times. Deeper ties to corporate cash for doubtful climate researcher. Okay. Well, <laughs> for years, politicians wanting to block legislation on climate change have bolstered their arguments by pointing to the work of a handful of scientists who claim that greenhouse gases pose little risk to humanity. One of the names they invoke most often is Wei Hak Soon, known as Willie, a scientist at the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics who claims that variations in the sun's energy can largely explain recent global warming. But newly released documents show the extent to which Dr. Soon's work has been tied to funding he received from corporate interests. Ooh, I wonder who the corporate interests are. I'm thinking PBS. Probably, yes. He has accepted more than $1.2 million in money from the fossil fuel industry. Ah, shocker. Got him. $1.2 million in money from the fossil fuel industry over the last decade while failing to disclose that conflict of interest in most of his scientific papers. Well, that would have made him look bad. 
Yeah, I wouldn't disclose it either. That yeah. sounds like uh, it sounds like I can completely invalidate all the conclusions that 100%. I've been spouting for the past 10 years. At least 11 papers he's published since 2008 omitted such a disclosure, and in at least eight of those cases, he appears to have violated ethical guidelines of the journals that published his work. The documents show that Dr. Soon, in correspondence with his corporate funders, described many of his scientific papers as deliverables that he completed in exchange for their money. <laughs> hey, boss, I did the job. <laughs> hey, you got them greenbacks for this? <laughs> Sorry, I'm not a good mafioso. I can tell. He used the same term to describe testimony he prepared for Congress. Though Dr. Soon did not respond to questions about the documents, he has long stated that his corporate funding has not influenced his scientific findings. I think that's probably pretty unlikely. I feel like that's probably not true even. <laughs> $1.2 million. Yeah, and this is $1.2 million in 2003 money. But like, you're a scientist and you're receiving over a million dollars from a fossil fuel company. That's That feels pretty disparaging, especially when... The other side of the argument is every reputable scientist, including like a very detailed breakdown on the NASA FAQ website. Now, do we know that NASA isn't receiving money from the sun? <sighs> They're certainly receiving a lot of energy from the sun. And energy is power. Uh -huh. and, and, and time and is money. money. Is, time is money and, and money, money is, is power. power. I think we can get there. <laughs> There's some little tricky math jujitsu yeah, I think we can get to. the transitive property. That's right. Hey there, a little inside baseball. We record this very podcast at the Climate Town office. And if you're not familiar with Climate Town, it's a YouTube series we make for as cheaply as possible. And that means schlepping our camera equipment all over New York City. Yes, our backpacks are full, and the gear we reach for every time is peak design. That voice you just heard is Ben Bolt, the executive producer of this podcast and of Climate Town. That's right, Rally. I mean, this is an ad, but we are genuinely loaded with peak design gear, from backpacks to sling bags to camera camera accessories. And by we, I usually just mean Ben. Ben literally has like seven things from Peak Design on during any given shoot. Yeah, really. I mean, they make good stuff. Uh, my freaking phone case from Peak Design. My phone charger on my desk. That's Peak Design too. My out front bike mount that I can put my phone on. Guess what? Peak Design. You know that little tripod we use on Climate Town shoots? The little travel tripod? The little travel tripod. They got organizers. They got straps, clips, duffel bags, everyday bags. And they're not f***ing around. Peak Design gear is guaranteed for life, whether you buy it firsthand or 10th hand. And they can make that kind of commitment and not go broke because they build stuff to last. As my father would say, it's built like a brick shit house. And now I'm hearing it out loud, that term is a little dated. Peak Design is a certified fair trade B Corp that prides itself on recyclable materials and it lobbies lawmakers in D.C. for environmental legislation. They're also the group who nominated Climate Town to be an environmental partner with 1% for the planet. So double thank you. And they also have been a podcast supporter of ours from day one. And also, also, they just make really good stuff. So go to peakdesign.com slash playbook. That's P-E-A-K design.com slash playbook for 20% off some of our favorite products and a picture of Ben on set dripping with Peak Design gear. I'm literally going to try to put as many pieces of Peak Design gear as I possibly can into one picture. I'm glad we just got health insurance because Ben's back is going to be demoed. But not because the Peak Design stuff is heavy. The other shit that we put inside well, in it. in bulk, it's heavy. If you, if you stack enough all... Peak Design stuff. <sighs> yeah, okay. I'm but not saying it's sweet, heavy gear. They got a it's good shoulder gear. strap. It really takes the weight off your it's shoulder. It's going to crush you to death. If that's how I got to go, sayonara. All right. Imagine it's the year 2006. Where are you? Oh, uh, I'm in high school. I'm wearing uh, low-rise boot-cut pants that are wet at the bottom and fraying. Uh, I have a bad haircut. I'm listening to pop-punk music. It is functionally not that different from how I am now, <laughs> if we're being 100% honest. Although, I hope the bottom of your pants aren't currently wet They're that's a, not that's a real wet. colorado thing just walking just through like snow. snowy wet parking lots i also at that point would have still had an underbite so this was pre a lot of nice. orthodontic work okay so 2006 we are starting to emerge into a new era mm -hmm. al gore drops an inconvenient truth mm -hmm. giant meteoric rise to become america's sexiest grandfather <laughs> he wins an oscar he wins a Grammy for best spoken word reading of his book, An Inconvenient Truth. We get a, a mainstreamified version of what global warming is. Mm -hmm. And naturally, the oil industry is coming out of the woodwork here to kind of tamp it down. Of course, they've known about climate change 
and the potential for climate change and global warming since the 60s, at yeah. least since 1979, when Dr. James Black called all the Exxon top brass into a boardroom and like documentedly told them about what the coming climate change mm -hmm. and what happens when you put too much CO2 in the atmosphere. Okay, so this is after Al Gore drops an inconvenient truth. Channel 4 in the UK releases a documentary by Martin Durkin called The Great Climate Change Swindle. Mm -hmm. Okay, so pretty compelling title. Mm -hmm. uh, we're getting the sense that this guy doesn't really believe in climate change. Yes. And his whole thesis is that climate change is almost completely the sun cycles. Okay. We, we see this really natural correlation in sun cycles and earth temperature. It's all the sun cycles. Um, but the interesting thing about releasing a documentary on television is that people can see it uh -huh. and then fact check it Oof. and then get Killer. you into an interview uh -huh. and then talk to you about it. Interesting. Okay. And so that is exactly what happened. ABC Australia's Tony Jones got an interview with Martin Durkin. And I don't want to say it's a sort of a to catch a predator kind of moment. Oh. But... Uh, we're just going to watch this clip and, uh, and you can kind of decide for yourself. Okay. All right. Because your film answers the question uh, or tries to answer the question, why is it getting hotter, with the theory that it's in fact the sun that causes global warming. All right. So now we're, we've cut to the documentary. And in this guy's documentary, they've got this graph that shows the solar radiance and it's got temperature. And it just sort of tries to imply that these are one and the same. So here we go. In 1991, senior scientists at the Danish Meteorological Institute decided to compile a record of sunspots in the 20th century and compare it with the temperature record. Nice music there. What they found was an incredibly close correlation between what the sun was doing and changes in temperature on Earth. Solar activity, they found, rose sharply to 1940, fell back for almost four decades and then started to rise again. So just for the listeners out there, they have just displayed a temp and solar activity graph. And these things, the temperature and the solar activity match up pretty carefully. It starts in 1860 and it cuts off sharply in 1980. Now we're back in the interview with Tony Jones talking to Martin Durkin. Well, once again, we asked our climatologists to have a look at this section of the film and to comment on it. They stop the record because they don't mention it falls when the temperature continues, so it's classic. Pick the section of the record that fits your preconception and then leave out the inconvenient parts. So they just picked the section where it matched up, yeah. deleted everything else, yeah. and presented that as the data. The graph conveniently stops at 1980 when the temperature starts to rise much more rapidly and the solar activity decreases. Why didn't you just continue that graph on to the present day? Because there are graphs available which do that. Well, firstly, the graph that we were using was um, created by Professor Fries Christensen from the Danish Space Agency. So, in, in, so he immediately is like, oh, yeah, we couldn't do that because this graph, I mean, I didn't make this graph. Professor Ruiz Christensen. Yeah, if you made think about it, grant. it's really Ruiz Christensen's fault. And this guy is from the. Da I don't even know this guy. He's from the Danish. Where is Climate Daneland? Center. Yeah, what even is a Daneland? So he's like immediately pushing this off onto this other guy. Uh -huh. um, created by Professor Ruiz Christensen from the Danish Space Agency. So it went completely. I, I can't remember off the top of my head. 25 years ago. Yeah, and it was in a period where we're a part of the program where we're talking about it was a historical part of the program where we're talking about key discoveries in uh, in the history of climatology. Shall I tell you what happens exactly. after 1980? <laughs> the temperature continues to rise very sharply. Solar activity falls off in the other direction. Now that would have been very hard to explain in your film, wouldn't it, if you'd actually used the modern data. Well, I mean, the graph that we used from Fries Christensen was the graph that he published in a very famous paper that sort of came out and was in part of the uh, program that we were talking about the history of people's understanding of what the solar effects might have been. This man is living my nightmare and I'm not uh. sympathetic to him because he is a climate denier, but I dread being in a situation where I have been so wrong about something and, th and then I'm on camera and somebody is like, here's all the ways you fucked up. You're right pretty like easy to see like it's bad and can you is, and then i just have to be like well, I, well uh, it's, uh, if you think about it really i couldn't have known any better that it's reese christensen is it's his fault it's and he's danish so yeah and being caught in an interview where there's 
two cameras in this room and one is pointed right at your sweaty face. <laughs> And he's just like dead to rights. The section, as you say, is based on his work. But when he and his colleagues saw your graphs and the way in which you'd use them in the program, they felt compelled to correct you. They wrote this, that their latest studies had explicitly concluded that after 1985, temperature continued to rise, just as I said, while the sunspot cycle length flattened out and thus no longer correlated with surface temperature. And they went on to say, this point was not included in the narrator's statement. Well, that's really the narrator's fault if yeah, you think about it. That, that, that narrator guy really beefed up. Yeah, I think that this like, he's got him every direction he tries to run here, where he's just like, well, it was somebody else's graph. Yeah, we talked to those guys. <laughs> They're still around. And they all said, no, you <laughs> misrepresented their data. And so they would like to correct you now. And he's like, oh, well, well that... That doesn't really even matter. It's, it's moot. Now he's got one last little parting shot about this graph, and you just got to watch it because it is okay. so deeply pleasurable. I don't want to say that word. It is. <laughs> it's just. It's just a nice. I don't know what our listeners at home are doing. Maybe it is deeply pleasurable. It gives you a nice little feeling here. Because in the original version of the swindle, you had another of the Danish graphs, which they say contained false data. Yeah, Tell us about that. Yeah. That was well, a gaff. That was like sneezing into a microphone. I made up some data and that was a gaff. I did make up some Egg data. Egg on my face. I also left my shoe untied in one of the earlier shots. <laughs> so that's another gaff. We got a lot of gaffs in this. We had a, uh, they've got a, a graph that has 400 years of temperature change and 400 years of solar activity. Um, and there was a gap on the, of a very small gap at one A second. very small gap of like 50 years. Yeah, it's, it's not like, a gap of like, oops, we forgot to write it down one time. It's a gap of decades. Yeah, this is like 20 to 30% of the graph that's that's gapped out. And here's his response. In, um, in uh, I think it's either solar activity or temperature, one or the other. And our graphics guy very helpfully joined it up, which was very embarrassing. And we've now corrected it for some Oh, it's the graphics guy. The, the graphics, graphics guy's guy. fault. He's probably also Danish. This graphics guy, I actually saw him and... He had a little mustache on, and he ran off kind of cackling. I bet he did it to sabotage our otherwise perfect documentary. That sounds like a graphics guy to me. Yeah. How many versions of the swindle have you actually put out since the complaints started to come through? I love that he named it the Great Climate Change Swindle because now he's just like, so uh, this swindle, you know, like... <laughs> You know, the swindle, the swindle that you swindled. Yeah. Like, how many times did you do the swindle? Yes. <laughs> oh, I mean, I do have to ask Channel 4 that. I, I don't know. I mean, we've got an international well, I've count, version. I've counted, I've counted at least four. If a documentarian asks you a question, they probably already know the answer. God, imagine being how this many, guy. How many, how many versions of the swindle did you put out? Oh, nobody knows. Actually, I know. Yeah, in fact, it's, it, it is it's the next 20 questions four. I'm going to be asking you. <laughs> How many versions of the swindle have you actually put out since the complaints started to come through? Oh, I mean, I do have to ask Channel 4 that. I, I don't know. I mean, we've got an international well, I've count, version I've counted, of this I've counted at least four which have slight or major differences in them. Oh, no, we, we immediately made um, uh, uh, the changes that we could straight away before we could get other graphs done. And then for subsequent ones... We, we immediately had. made the changes we could before we could get other graphs done. My guy, your whole point is the graphs. Yeah. Your whole argument is based on the graphs. If the graphs aren't done, you don't have the basis. Don't put it out. <laughs> the graphs aren't done. Your whole deal is like the graphs line up perfectly. Yeah. So if you don't have a graph, if you don't know what the solar irradiation was, you don't have a documentary. All right. I'm a, I'm a director and he, I did make a movie. I don't have the film here. <laughs> I have tried to imagine myself in this scenario where like, I've just tried to pull a fast one. Oh, I'd kill myself. The the cavalierness it's with so which he went on a fucking interview. Imagine being that guy and being like, I could probably I could probably bullshit this for long enough. He must believe it. He must sincerely have drunk his own Kool-Aid because I, I can't so. imagine if you're just a guy who's in it for the money, you have to know that you go on this show and you look like a fucking idiot. Yeah. I, I think he I think he felt like he'd be able to like talk his way around and 
when you're when you're forced to reckon with <laughs> here's the, what you put out and here's what the Danish people say and here's the difference. Like it's just tough to yeah. But where are Danish people even from? Yeah. Um. So that was hilarious. Feels and, good to laugh. Again. <laughs> and what an idiot! Yeah. So stupid. But it like devil's advocate. It's easy to make fun of stuff from you know 2006, 2007. Getting jiggy with it. Uh, of I think course. That was, I think that was even earlier. But warped tour era. Yeah. I love to make fun of that shit. Um, but like, how pervasive is that idea still? Because that sure. seems that seems like that guy really fucking ripped him a new one, and it seems like that sort of shut the book on it for me. It certainly should have shut the book on it for everybody. Mm -hmm. But NASA doesn't still have that on their website because the book was <laughs> shut in 2007. Think about these sorts of arguments, especially this argument. This has got a really long tail. So like, mm. this argument can keep cropping up because it's just complicated enough mm -hmm. you got to know enough about solar physics to be able to debunk it and if it hasn't been debunked around you in a while you don't know why it's wrong and just to drive this point home i'm going to show you a clip that cropped up in 2010 and then again went viral in 2022 oh man you get paid twice for that uh well i hope he negotiated that in his contract mm. this is pierce corbin on russia today or rt it's and then not pierce it. morgan not pierce morgan that's okay. right he is, he's like if Piers Morgan ate only salt and bones for <laughs> 10 to 20 years. Okay. Was sort of locked away in Gollum's cavern. Okay. Just like. Not a healthy looking man. That's right. Yeah. That's right. This is not a practicing astrophysicist. This is a guy with a master's degree in astrophysics. Mm -hmm. I'm not shitting on master's degrees. In fact, I think they're very credentializing. <laughs> but I am saying that this is not a leader in the field. Okay. Okay. And so here's his, his riff. There was uh, heat waves in Russia and there were also floods in Pakistan as now. And in the previous few years, there was also uh, floods in the English summers, uh, also 132 years ago. So these things are dictated by solar activity in the moon. They're nothing to do with mankind and those who say that are just trying to make money. Solar activity and the moon. <laughs> The sun and the moon have long been at war <laughs> and the humans are their casualties in their ongoing fight for dominance of the heavens. Yeah, so that's that's a little clip we have from uh, August 10th of 2010 and then again August of 2022. Jesus, Because okay. this exact same clip went viral again on social media. It's, uh, I think, TikTok and Instagram. And this is another little idiosyncrasy of climate disinformation. It's a little tricky. And so even though it's fully been debunked for mm -hmm. 20 years by this point, it keeps popping up and people keep hearing it, not knowing why it's wrong. And so now they are reinfected all over again. Interesting. Which is kind of a huge bummer. I just wish you could kind of inoculate everybody with the facts so that this see one... now you're talking vaccines and we are going to lose listeners no i can't believe we have such a big venn diagram between the anti-vaxxer pro-climate action squad it's that is our target demo we are cornering a niche market it's a little teeny sliver what's interesting about this clip going viral multiple times is it's not a good clip it's he doesn't he's not like an engaging presence or an interesting man to watch yeah he's just saying no, no, it's the sun. The, yeah. There's not even like any. <laughs> I mean, the problem is it's just it. slim pickings. You yeah. don't have a lot of actual scientists mm -hmm. who are saying this bullshit because it's so deeply been debunked for so long. Yeah. Like NASA has it on their website of like, hey, if you hear this, it's wrong. This is the answer. Uh -huh. So for a scientist to just like forget what every piece of scientific information that they know says to say some bullshit, uh -huh. they have to like, you know, they have to really want to just be on TV. Yeah. And can you blame them? I mean, I can't. TV is cool as hell. But if you're not Willie Soon, Willie Soon is like a child saying really soon. <laughs> I do like that. Um, but if you're, if you're, you know, there's not a giant pool of these people available. Yeah. This is not a guy with a PhD. This is not a respected man in the field of astrophysics. Mm -hmm. This is just a guy with a master's degree in astrophysics who they were able to get on TV. Yeah. So like, this is why we're seeing this. It's yeah. not accurate, but if you got somebody to say it, it can pop off on like a, a social media if nobody knows what the right yeah. answer is. All right. That was Piers Corbin, a.k.a. 
uh, a dude made of electrical tape and milk. <laughs> like just a just a man who yeah, cannot look stand up. Good. Yeah. Haunted is how I would describe how he looks. Yeah, he he comes (laughs) pre-haunted. I just wanted to play a little bit more from that Tucker clip because I think what he says after the clip we played is kind of indicative of the rest of this argument. The truth is the climate hasn't risen in the past. Temperatures have not risen in the past several years. They've gone down, and there's, in fact, an emergent scientific consensus um, that we may be in for a period of global cooling caused not by greenhouse gases but by fluctuations in solar energy sunspots so well the they, truth is we they don't know you. and by the way they disagree not only disagree anybody who expresses any kind of scientific skepticism is dismissed as like a denier like you're a holocaust denier or something you're a crazy person you're evil the truth is the core of science is inquiry it's okay. so funny that there was a time when tucker would criticize holocaust deniers because yeah. now they make up a not insignificant portion That's of his 80 audience 90 percent of his people who are still buying his <laughs> mugs or whatever he's selling This to me is kind of the core of this because he's like, it's about asking questions, any kind of scientific skepticism. So in his head, it counts as scientific skepticism to say, "Uh, I think it's the sun because I saw this documentary one time Mm -hmm. and then refuse to hear the actual science behind it. Yeah. So he's, he's not being skeptical. He's just parroting a piece of actual propaganda and then refusing to look up the answer, Mm -hmm. which you could find in a hundred places, including NASA's website. Yeah. And this is like, this kind of thing is really pervasive in all of climate disinformation. It seems like the playbook is to find a thing that people don't really know a lot about, make a claim, and then repeat the claim forever. Yeah. Because it doesn't matter if you get debunked, It doesn't matter if every scientist who actually knows what the fuck they're talking about constantly says the same thing. Hey, we know about that already. That's actually not what's happening. And here's all the papers behind it. If you just get one guy to say it one time, you can just keep saying it over and over again. And all you got to do is pay that guy, I don't know, somewhere between $1.1 and $1.3 million. (laughs) And that's kind of the play here. Interesting. Yeah. And it, it, it does really rely on people like me who are like, eh, I don't know. I don't know about that. I agree. I think it's like it's up to people to seek out the information. And mm-hmm. there's that quote like a lie can get halfway around the world before the truth has time to put its boots on. Yeah. Why is the truth wearing boots? Put slip on shoes on. It'll, it's much faster. <laughs> Easier for TSA at the very least. Absolutely. But the point is like this keeps popping off. This keeps going viral yeah. despite being wrong because it's just so easy to fake the answer. Yeah. It's so easy to just believe, yes, the sun is probably changing and the climate's changing and the word changing is in both of those sentences. <laughs> so fuck me. I'm yeah. just going to go off and yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go bowling. You're just going to go bowling? Yeah, yeah. I do. F- I love bowling. I bowled a 175 less than a week ago. I have no frame of reference for what a good bowling score. Oh, really? Frame, 175 frame, is a perfect. bowling frame. There you a 175 go. is perfect. Wow, congratulations. It's not. I'm lying. I'm sorry. I'm going to be the first to admit Disinformation. That. Yeah, it is a lie. But I did do a 175. That's pretty good. Cool. Um, all right, I'm going to show you one last clip and then we're going to get the fuck out of here. A this 300 is 300's perfect, right? Yeah. I just wow. remembered there was a Disney Channel original movie called Alley, Alley Cat, Cat Strike. Strike. Yes. Hell yeah. Okay. The the move that they did at the end of Alley Cat Strike, I don't think really works. I have tried to do that move before and it does not work. And, and you I didn't refuse know there was an oil, re- there was oil re- on the land? No. Okay. All right. Let's yeah. watch right. this Laura Ingram clip. All right, so this is Laura Ingram. This is from October 12th, 2022. So obviously very fucking recent. Mm-hmm. Um, Another haunted looking man. What is with all these like ghostly figures? I this think, is a I skeleton they... that's had like some latex <laughs> stretched over his face. I think when they sell their soul to the oil firms, there is some sort of, you know, sure, like sure. sucking it out of them sort of event happening. I guess. Yeah. All these guys. He like, looks gaunt. He looks. Yeah. He, he he appears to have just been released from a 70 year prison sentence. <laughs> OK, here we go. They show that we're headed into a grand solar minimum around 2060 and that we'll see gradual cooling over the next few decades. So the bottom line is we have no clue what's going to really happen. So the only sensible approach is to get ready for it, to make our infrastructure hardened, to use solid, dependable sources of energy like coal. This is a piece of coal. They just picked up a piece of coal. And not to turn off our solid, reliable energy sources for flimsy wind and solar power. You know, you'd laugh. It's appropriate that I'm based here in Ottawa, because right now here in Ottawa, Canada, 
they're running a, a municipal election. I and love when people come on Fox News to talk about the like city election that they're having yeah. in their little city. <laughs> That, like, Laura Ingram doesn't know shit about this. No. And she's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the Ottawa municipal election. Got it. And it is the most corrupt election I have ever oh, seen. God. They are trying oh, their God. best to bring in a climate alarmist as mayor. So guess who they put in charge of the four debates they've had? Climate activists. They Real have- quick. There's been lots of military coups, official overthrows. Uh, cases where people have won election by something like a 99% margin and the Ottawa municipal election is the most corrupt election you've ever seen. <laughs> More than like Pinochet in Chile. Well, this man does look to be about 290 years old. So <laughs> I assume he's seen some elections. Like anyway, I, Laura Ingram has a little, little sign off here. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me that this is happening in Canada. It's happening in the United States. And we need real facts to uh, to discern what the real truth is here. Professor, thank you for this invaluable work that you're doing. You know, when you talk to like crazy old coots. <laughs> sure, as I do often. Th- I kind of do. I guess I like people will. I have a very approachable you, face. You really do. More than almost anybody I've ever met. It's just that Midwestern to milk you. that I drank when I was a child. <laughs> I just got this flat moon face. People are just like, I can, I'll project whatever I want onto this guy. I get talked to by a lot of crazy old coots, I uh-huh. would say. That's how you get rid of a crazy old coot. You go, <laughs> that's whatever you were talking about. <laughs> okay, I'll see you later. <laughs> so this shit is happening even now. Like mm-hmm. it's 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 been debunked for decades and it keeps cropping up. So if you're out there, we know about the Milankovitch cycles. We know about the sun's magnetic field. These are not what's causing climate change. Just know that's not accurate information. All right. Well, Raleigh, you've talked me out of believing that the sun is responsible for climate change. I've talked you into it and then out of it very quickly. Got it. All right. So is this misinformation or disinformation? I think this is just plain and simple disinformation. Agreed. I think we see uh, graphs being doctored. You cut off a part of a graph to fit a narrative. Well, that's the graphics guy's fault. That's true. And so, the other guy's fault also. And, and like like more than a million dollar payout to like the most prominent guy who's parroting this. Like, I, it doesn't feel like there's misinformation involved. This yeah. is like a an attempt at muddying the waters. Yeah. Um, okay. So we're, we like to do this little Thanksgiving role play thing. Mm-hmm. Let's give it a rip. You're at Thanksgiving dinner. I get knocked down, and I get up again. You're never going to keep me down. Oh, Aunt Ruth, is that Chumbawamba? Yeah, it's Chumbawamba. I got it on my Apple uh, gift card. Oh, wow. Yeah, I that's bought great. it for $15. Oh, that's uh, more than I was expecting, but good for you. Oh, thank you. Hey, as long as you're listening to stuff, you know, I got this cool new podcast. Oh, really? What's yeah, it about? it's called The Climate Deniers Playbook. It's all about uh, climate change. Now, I, I do believe in climate change. I, great. You know, I do. But I, I've heard that it, it's maybe just the sun's natural cycles, you know, like the sun oh. goes through cooling and the sun goes through heating and we get ice ages when it's cooling and we mm-hmm. get hot ages when it's heating and uh, yeah, yeah maybe it's just all the sun wow you know what's really interesting aunt ruth is cats yes cats are interesting i actually have a video i would love to show you later okay um but what's really interesting is that um you're totally right that oh. that the sun does influence uh the climate and temperature on earth and uh there's a bunch of different cycles involved and climate scientists have you know, known about this for a long time and they've, they've worked it into a lot of their models. So you're, oh. yeah, that's that information that you're getting. It's good information. But what's really interesting is that we've been tracing these uh, solar models for a long time. And if anything, we're, we're really supposed to be in a cooling period right now, Uh-oh. but the temperature, I just gave away my good coat. Oh, well you're in luck because the temperature keeps going up. Oh yeah. So even though the solar cycles, which have historically impacted temperature on Earth, even though the cycles are supposed to be getting cooler, we're getting warmer, which really points to stuff that we're doing here on Earth as a as a cause of temperature increases. Well, that, but Laura Ingram had a ghost on her show, and that ghost told me that it was probably just the natural cycles of the sun that were doing it, and that we shouldn't pay attention to the climate scientists, and that we should eat coal. 
Hmm. I don't know if he wanted you to eat coal, but if he did, if he did say that, you shouldn't eat coal. Oh, it's bad okay. for your teeth. Wow. Well, this has been very educational. Good. And I'm I think glad. I'm going to listen to your little podcast. Okay, great. Do you need me to walk you through how to find it? No, I got the yellow pages. Okay. The Climate Deniers Playbook is hosted by Raleigh Williams, that's me, and me, Nicole Conlin. Our executive producer is Ben Bolt, and our audio producer is Gregory Haddock. Theme music from the wickedly talented Tony Dominic, and artwork by Jordan Dahl. Who, yes, okay, is my boyfriend, but that's not why we hired him. We hired him because he's very good at art. And our researchers are Knut Haraldson, James Krugnail, and Carly Rizzuto. <laughs> That's whatever you were talking about. <laughs> okay, I'll see you later. <laughs>